Hi, I'm Dr. Doug Ritchie, and I'm standing here in the Ritchie Brace Central Fabrication Facility. We work really hard to make sure that our braces end up fitting the patient perfectly, and more importantly, that the braces deliver a positive patient outcome. I'm going to take a few minutes to share with you some pearls of how we can assure a good outcome starting in the office setting with the casting process and the prescription process. One common deformity in adult acquired flat foot is the presence of forefoot supinatus. Forefoot supinatus is an acquired inversion of the forefoot as the rear foot everts. It is reducible, making it different than a fixed forefoot varus. These are two casts, right and left, taken of a patient with forefoot supinatus where the deformity has not been corrected in the casting technique. Instead of the practitioner pushing down on the first ray to evert the forefoot, the forefoot has been left inverted. And as the cast is set on the ground, it captures at least 10 degrees of forefoot varus bilateral, which really isn't a true forefoot varus. The lab will get this cast and they will correct what looks like forefoot varus by applying a platform to the positive cast and the shape of the orthosis will invert the forefoot to bring the rear foot to perpendicular. The problem is when the patient steps on this orthosis or brace, the inverted forefoot will now slide laterally off the brace. This is one cause of lateral slippage of a patient when they get fitted for their Ritchie brace or even a foot orthotic is the patient is slipping off due to overcorrection of the forefoot which starts in the office setting by failure to reduce forefoot supination deformity. Another problem when we fail to reduce supination deformity is the arch is much flatter in this cast and the brace and the foot orthotic will be flatter. Practitioners will hold this orthotic up to the patient and they will not see good conformity to the arch. It all started with the casting process and the failure to reduce supination deformity. Here is an example of a cast where the practitioner reduced supination deformity, resulting in an almost perfect alignment of the rear foot and a good capture of the true shape of the medial arch. This was accomplished by the practitioner putting the foot in subtalar neutral and simply pushing down gently on the first ray, correcting forefoot supination. This brace will end up controlling the patient well. It'll be more comfortable than this brace will. And this brace has a very low likelihood of controlling deformity with lots of problems that may have to be adjusted later. So let's anticipate ahead of time with our casting process, simply pushing down on the first ray and reduce forefoot supinatus.